Hello, everyone. Um, as you all know, today we are hearing from four outstanding students who applied to super competitive niche majors that required a lot of planning and needed a lot of pieces of the application puzzle to kind of all fit in. Um, our panelist, Ananya Sachdev, who applied to study medicine in the UK, will help us uh, deep dive into understanding what is needed to be successful um, at one of these topmost med schools. Before we actually get into conversation with Ananya, I'd like to introduce her and give you all a little bit of an overview of her profile and the colleges that she applied to. Uh, now, Ananya had a great extracurricular profile. She shadowed doctors like gynecologists, pediatricians to understand the diverse nature of doctor duties. She also observed a multidisciplinary medical team collaborate together. She also uh, kind of shadowed and watched a hysterectomy being performed. Um, in addition to this, she also volunteered at a, a learning disability institute and also got hands-on experience at a COVID vaccination center where she advised uh, patients on post-vaccination medication and rest periods. So as you can see, she did multitude of things and uh, obviously because of this magnitude of extracurriculars was successful at Imperial. She also applied uh, to other colleges in the UK like UCL, Newcastle, Bristol, and Liverpool. Um, hi, Ananya. Thank you so much for taking the time to share your challenges, your thoughts, your pitfalls, and your greatest achievements during the application process with our audience here today. As we all know, the um, medical application requires a lot of preparation and time management and most importantly i think it uh, has many different layers of the application right so um just wanted to hear a little bit from you about uh, the entrance exams and if you can tell us a little bit about how starting early helped you prepare better for the ucat and the bmat uh thank you so much for calling me to share my experiences and yeah, so starting with the entrance exams, there are two entrance exams for the UK Medicine Admissions, which is the UCAT and the BMAT. They're two very different exams, and a few schools use the UCAT and others use the BMAT. So these exams, while both individually different, are also very different than other exams we give at school, as well as SAT, ACT. They require a lot of specialized preparation. And so because we haven't been exposed to sort of questions that these exams have. It's better to start earlier, probably when you're in the 11th grade, so that you have a better idea of what the questions are going to be. I think the most important time for the entrance exam preparation is the summer between the 11th and 12th grade, because most people would give their UCAT in the month of July, August, and September, which is why using the summer break to optimize your preparation for the UCAT is so, so important. Because once you start 12th grade, you will have a lot of IA work preparation for the board exams, internal school exams. So making use of the summer vacations is essential. Same with the BMAT, because the BMAT happens in either October or November, which is a very important time for college applications to other countries, college interviews, etc. So if you have an early exposure to the content of the exams, the type of questions they would ask, the timing, you will have a lot better time preparing for the exams in the months leading up to them. In terms of the actual preparation of the exams, I would recommend that you first go online and look at what exactly the exam entails. There are a lot of books and resources available to prepare for the exam, which while they can be difficult to access in India, you should try and get your hands on these books because they have sample tests, sample questions, which are very, very accurate. Along with that, there are a lot of websites that have preparatory courses and mock tests, which you can use to prepare for both these exams. Because you can give the exams only once, it's very, very important that you feel 100% prepared before you go into the exam. There's no resetting it. You would have to wait a whole year, which is not something you would want to do. So whenever the date is that you have to give your exam, you should make sure that you are 100% confident before you walk into the exam room. Everybody does not have to give both the BMAT and the UCAT that depends on your profile, your aspirations, the schools you're looking at applying to, but whichever of the ones you do choose to give, make sure you have 
a sort of idea early on because you can't really decide that now I want to give the exam and it's a few weeks away. You should have these decisions made for you earlier, which is why not only for the exams, but also in general, starting early at this in this process is so, so important so that you can make your decisions earlier and then have enough time to prepare and perfect anything that you have to do for your application. Great. Thank you so much, Ananya, for that. Would you be able to elaborate a little bit on the content uh, that is involved uh, in giving the BMAT and the UCAT? Absolutely. So the UCAT is a more general exam, which around 25 to 30 schools in the UK require. It is five sections. So there's a verbal reasoning section, numerical section, and sort of an, it's the beginning of the test is kind of like an aptitude test or something you would relate to an aptitude test. However, what makes it unique is the fact that the timing is so stringent. You have probably 30 seconds per question in every section. And so it's, you have to be very good at it to finish the test. One of the most important sections in the test is the situational judgment test, which is very unique in a way that it gives you situations that you would face as a doctor or as a worker in a hospital. And you have to agree or disagree with the decisions of the people in the questions. And this may seem difficult and it is kind of challenging because as a student, you don't really think about a lot of situations that doctors are in. However, that is why preparing for the test in advance and doing practice questions is so important. So a, my recommendation for preparation for the UCAT is practice, practice, practice because of how time, how the time is so less for this test. There are a lot of, on the, the official UCAT website itself has mock tests that you can do for the UCAT, which are very, very useful and something you should look into. The BMAT is a more academic focused test in the sense that it has a maths, English, biology, chemistry, and physics sections, which is sort of an, the level between IGCSE and IB. So maybe like an SL level is what the level is for the sciences and math. And so preparing for this is a lot more textbook content based where you would have to look into the syllabus of the exam. You could use your IGCSE textbooks, your IB textbooks to revise the chapters that are there in the exam. And the challenging part of this exam is the essay section that happened, that's at the end, where you have a series of um, questions and you choose one. They normally revolve around ethical situations or medical situations. At the start of your preparation, these questions may seem daunting, but as you continue with your preparation for the interviews as well, you will realize that the essays have content that's very similar to the interviews. And if you have done enough reading on ethical problems, problems of the NHS and healthcare systems in the world, you will find the essays easy to do. And practicing and reading previous year essay questions does make that a lot easier. Thank you so much for all those very, very useful tips, Ananya. And uh, kudos to you for all that hard work. There's so much that actually needed to go into these uh, preparations for these entrance tests. And I mean, you students balancing all this work with your school coursework is uh, tremendous. So great job there. Um, I'm going to move on to uh, talking a little bit about the um, interviews vis-a-vis uh, -vis the uh, medicine interviews. And I know that this actually requires a completely different uh, thought process, mindset, and a lot of preparation. So if you can tell us a little bit about the interview process that you underwent, uh, talk a little bit about the panel interview and the multiple mini interviews as well, please, Ananya. Absolutely. In all honesty, I'm no expert because I mean, as a student, we're not that we don't get interviewed that often. It's a very weird feeling to be interviewed by someone who is a doctor or a medical student and knows so much about something that you don't know a lot about. Along with that, the UK medicine interviews are unique in the fact that they're not academic interviews. They're not many questions about science or anatomy, etc. But it's a lot about you and your desire to study medicine. And I think the most important advice for anyone giving an interview for medicine is that you should be 100% sure that you want to study medicine and you want to be a doctor because that desire to study medicine has to reflect through your answers. You are signing up for a 12 to 15 year education journey. And so 
the interviewer should see that desire to be a doctor and to study medicine. With preparing for the interviews, one of the most important things is to start early because the questions that you get in the interview are, while you could prepare for them using resources, it's something that you haven't been asked a lot in life. There are, it tests your empathy, your ethical decision-making, your decision-making as a doctor, which is something that's very, very difficult to just learn in a few days. Also tests your relationships, uh, forming relationships, your communication skills. Which is why if you have an exposure to the interview questions early and early, you will be able to improve your answers and your way of expressing yourself. In terms of the actual interviews, you have panel interviews and MMIs, which are multiple mini interviews. Panel interviews are essentially where there are one or two people who interview you for the whole time. And multiple mini interviews are where you have four or five smaller interviews of maybe five or six minutes with single interviewers. However, even though these interview styles are so different, this preparation you would do for them is very similar because what you need to express to the interviewers is your personality and what you have done. And in both these interview styles, that same message has to come across. To, I think to become better at expressing yourself and your desire to study medicine, it's important that you talk to other doctors and other medical students. If you um, have been thinking about this for a while already, you can get, you have the time to get in touch with doctors, medical students, maybe professors, and talk to them about their journey studying medicine, why they wanted to study medicine. And hearing other people articulate themselves can help you express yourself better. Because I had time um, to prepare for the interviews, my mentor Arti helped me do interviews with other mentors. She connected me with doctors as well, who I was able to do interviews with and I was able to speak to them and understand how they discuss medical problems and how they express their concerns about the medical community. Along with that, I think when you give the interview, you have to be very calm, confident and very composed. And Honestly, I was a very nervous person when I started preparing for the interviews. I, I've cried in my interview preparation sessions because I used to panic so much. And if you and when you have the opportunity to prepare and practice slowly and calmly on a weekly basis, you can really pick up on what you're doing wrong and also improve it. And this will not just help for the interviews, but it will help generally in life when you have to present yourself anywhere presentation jobs etc so if you are looking at doing these interviews make sure you find yourself a mentor or someone who will keep you sort of guided through this process because it's difficult to do it by yourself and also make sure you practice and prepare as much as you can every week you can read something or learn about something new for your interview because that will really really help at the end Great, great insights there, Ananya. And I know you actually started really, really early in the process with your interview prep. I think you started in January of the application year. So that gave you a good eight months of preparation before you actually did the uh, interviews yourself. So I think in conclusion uh, for our audience here today, it would be very, very important to start early so that you can actually make sure that you're tackling all the different parts of the application in a timely manner. And all these different parts of the application are very, very important to any student being successful eventually. Um, and moving on to my last question uh, to you, Ananya, uh, your advice for future medicine applicants. Well, uh, I think there's a lot of things that I've taken away from this process, but I think there's five or six things which are very, very important that I like to discuss. The most important thing is that you should be 100% sure that you want to study medicine. This is a very long journey that there's, it's very difficult to turn back from. And you should be confident in your desire to study medicine. And that confidence then can, if you are confident, it can reflect in your interviews, your essays, your conversations. Secondly, you should be sure of what you want because this is such a complicated application process. It's better if you decide which country you want to apply to, which schools you want to apply to, because trying to juggle different countries, different exams is complicated and you can't be the best at everything. 
So if you have chosen, I want to buy, apply to the UK or I want to apply to Ireland, then you should focus on that and put your energy into that process. Something else I'd like to say is that you should, if you can, involve your parents in your application journey because yes, may, maybe they're probably not doctors, they don't know what medical school is, that all is true, but they have been through a lot of difficult things in life and they can help you through this journey. They, I, My parents supported me so much through this journey and it makes things a lot easier if you share with your parents, if you connect your counselors and your parents to help you through this difficult time. The next thing is um, very, very important about how you have to put in hard work to this in this whole process yes medicine is a very very challenging field and you always have to put in hard work but you're probably going to have to do a lot more than your friends you're probably going to miss some parties some trips outings because you have your BMAT or your interviews and that is just how life is going to be for the next 12 15 maybe 20 years and so if that's something if while doing this process as well you realize that oh, maybe this is not for me, then it's good. At least you've not signed up for something that's not for you. Because the hard work that you have to put in to be a doctor is something that has to start now in the 11th and 12th grade. I think that's some of the most important things I've learned from my journey, but I'm happy to speak with anyone who would like to ha have any, that has any more questions or would like to learn more about the application journey. And also you should, really try to have fun during this these two years because they are your last two years at home and with your parents, with your friends. And so during all this, you should really, really try to make sure you are enjoying yourself and have, making the most of your IB or 11th and 12th years in school. Thank you so much, Ananya, for that. And I have to admit, I really um, kind of believe in the point that you cited about, you know, your parents being part of your application journey, because we also at the Red Pen uh, kind of believe in working in a very collaborative manner. So we have different consultants working together on one particular student. And the more uh, people, the more thoughts that you have, uh, you know, working together to, uh, you know, make sure that we're getting the application to the best possible level is what we all aspire to do, right? Um, another thing, thank you so much for taking the time. I have to say, I feel so uh, inspired talking to students like yourself who are so dedicated to their cause and are ready to push their boundaries. It's truly exceptional, the hard work that you've put in and where that has gotten you. And uh, we all wish you all the very, very best with this new journey that you're ready to embark on. And thank you again for taking the time out from your beautiful holiday to inspire our students who are waiting to take away some of the important thoughts that you've shared with all of us here today. 